Escape the Room, Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor. This is a board game inspired by a long tradition of locked room mysteries. I mean, as a genre, as a literary genre, starting from the 19th century already, there were locked room mysteries, uh, usually short stories, occasionally novels, where a crime was committed in a room that was locked, and although those stories were not interactive, the reader could still try to figure it out. Uh, how was it possible that somebody was able to escape the room, that was already last locked after a crime was committed and somebody escaped from that room. Starting from the 1970s, you have digital text adventures in which now, in an interactive form, you, the reader slash player, are trying to escape a room. And that idea has been around in various forms, in video games, recently in real life as also, like close to here in Indianapolis, I live in Bloomington, Indiana, there's a place where you can go and for a fee they lock you in a room and you have an hour with a group of friends to try to escape and figure out how to how to get out of there. Uh, given the fact that we live in an, in an age of renaissance of board games, it was only time before somebody figured out a way of putting the kind of experience into a game. There's a party game that is uh, uh, marketed as for three to eight players. In truth, I don't see any reason why somebody could not play it with their spouse with just two players. Actually, it can even be played as a solitaire game. Uh, the theme is the group of players has been summoned to an event. I'm not going to give any spoilers, by the way, so don't worry. The things that I'll tell you in this review are things that either you will figure out as soon as you open the box, so I'm um, not a problem there, or in any case, general things that will not spoil the surprises in the game. So I've been summoned to an event with your friends, and before you know it, actually you're locked into a room and you're trying to escape, and it's a real-time game, so you only have a certain amount of time to figure out how to, how to leave the room. Um, in essence, it is a string of puzzles. As I said, for this reason, I don't see why three should be the minimum amount of players. No spoilers, no spoilers. When you open the, the box, you find very cryptic uh, rule, a very cryptic set of rules that pretty much tell you don't open things until you're instructed to do so. Uh, we play Risk Legacy, we play Pandemic Legacy, we are becoming familiar with that idea. And what you find in the box with most of the components is a group of envelopes which are sealed when you open the box first. They're not anymore after I played the game. Um, and these box, the, these envelopes represent different features that you find in the room in which you are. A telescope, for example, a door, as you can imagine, it's a pretty important one, a bookcase. Uh, the filing cabinet, and so on and so forth. And you're told in the rule sheet, well, in another sheet of paper that comes with it, you're given an introduction of the story, sort of like a background, and then you're told to start working on one of these envelopes. Inside each envelope, you find the components for a puzzle or multiple puzzles. You'll find different things and here's when I can I start wanting to tell you stuff that I cannot tell you there are different puzzles that work in very different ways um, that you have to deal with each envelope will give you some components you start working with some instructions uh, but there is one general idea that I can tell you without spoiling anything to you which is the general idea behind each puzzle that is in each uh, envelope, you will find a puzzle that will point to another envelope, to another area of the room that you need to work with. And you need to figure out how to open that envelope. That doesn't mean physically to open each envelope, you simply pull and you're done. The fact is, before you're allowed to open the next envelope, you need to solve the puzzle. That is, to, before I'm allowed to open this envelope here, I need to solve the puzzle that is marked with the symbol here. Before opening this envelope, I need to solve this puzzle here. Before opening this envelope, I think you guessed it, this puzzle here. As you can see, each symbol indicating the puzzle has four colored boxes. Um, maybe if, I, if we look at the bookcase, you get a sense of what happens next. There are many symbols in the game. You see these symbols here. In essence, each puzzle has a solution that is different, um, but it's based on the same idea. 
Each puzzle, each puzzle solution has four pieces of information, each corresponding to a color. And the idea is to match one of the many symbols that are present in the game with the color. So in order to solve this puzzle, you need to figure out which symbol goes with red in this puzzle, which symbol goes with yellow, which with blue, and which with, with green, well, green and blue. Uh, Sorry to be cryptic, but let's say, imagine, I'm, I'm making this up, imagine again that you have a puzzle where you have colors, a band of colors, all the colors on one hand, and all the possible symbols on the other hand, and you need to figure out ways of connecting a symbol with a color. So, for example, to figure out the lightning bolt goes with red, and the symbol of the tau goes with blue, and the mathematical symbol of a plus addition goes with green, and so on and so forth. When you think you have the solution, so you will have the four symbols associated with the four colors, and then you use the solution wheel. Again, no spot as this you see from the beginning, and it is also referenced in the instructions. The solution wheel, you will look at the symbol on the outer uh, on the outer circle of the wheel corresponding to the puzzle you're trying to solve. For example, if I'm trying to solve this puzzle here, I look at the symbol here. And then I place under this symbol, I turn these are the wheels here until under that symbol I have for each wheel the symbol that I think corresponds to the solution. For example, in this puzzle here, in this puzzle here, I think that the red symbol is associated with the sort of like Christmas tree here. And I think that in that puzzle there, uh, the yellow is associated with the moon and the green is associated with the lightning bolt and the tau is associated with the, uh, with the blue. I think that this is a solution. I think this is a solution. I, pl I turn the, th the wheels there, and if I'm right, so there will be two, at least two white circles showing that will show the bottom of the solution wheel. And both symbols in there will show the same symbol of the puzzle. So basically, if my solution were right, which is not clear, you would see these two windows, or see two windows like this one, showing that... Uh, solution there, showing that symbol there. And maybe <laughs> simply a solution uh, that you try doesn't show any symbol, or as you saw in the previous example, which was a completely random one, it shows symbols that are not correct. If the symbols are correct, the two symbols that you see in the center of the solution will correspond to the symbol of the puzzle you're trying to solve, then you're allowed to open the envelope take out the components, which will point to another envelope and will give you the things that you need to work on to put together the solution for the other envelope. You do it like this, jump from puzzle to puzzle and solution to solution or frustration to frustration until the time runs out and you lose the game or uh, you're able to solve the mystery and escape the room. And interesting enough, there are some choices to be made along the way so you have multiple endings. Um, this is the basic idea of the game. And probably the first question to be addressed is like, why do I need a game when in essence, and it truly is, it, the, the game is a string, is a string of puzzles. Can you buy a puzzle book with riddles and brain and brain teasers? Because this is what the game is. It is a collection of brain teasers in sealed envelopes. So you could buy some brain teasers and invite some friends over and play with those which I've done, which I've done in the past. I used to have a large collection of brain teasers, then for a variety of reasons, uh, including I wanted more money to buy board games, I sold them. Some I gave to friends, so I don't have my large collection of brain teasers, but we did have some brain teaser nights uh, before we started having regular board game nights. Um, why so? Why would you play Escape the Room rather than just buying some brain teasers? Well, actually, even if you just look at the money, um, this would be less expensive. I see the copies are available for $18 to $20 online, and there is a lot of stuff in here, a lot of stuff that I'm not showing you. A lot of components that look very nice, they give a variety of puzzles, uh, they give you a large variety of different ways that your brain needs to work to 
to figure things out and to move to the next step. Also, you have a frame of a story, you have a narrative which is very thin and some of the big surprises are not that big, some of the, of the plot twists are not that twisty, uh, but you do have some flavor there coming from atmosphere, coming from from the setting. So you have an overall framing, the narrative framing that you would not have if you're just putting together a bunch of, of puzzles. And then if you're putting together a bunch of puzzles, you may not know the level of difficulty. Here you know that somebody has taken has taken the time to put together puzzles in a way that makes sense, that gives you a reasonable but challenging um, time limit. So somebody has done the work of putting them together in a cohesive experience, which you would not have if you're putting together uh, several puzzles to present it to your friends. Unless you already know the solution of the puzzles, then you have done this work, but most likely you will want to also have fun. So if you're presenting your friends with puzzles that you do not know, uh, you do not know, maybe they will be all too easy or all too hard. So here there is work that has been done to make puzzles that are challenging but not impossible. And that already is fun. And again, and then you also have, I cannot tell you too much, but there is a certain joy of manipulating these components. The components look good, they're different from one another. There is the joy of the tactile, visual, sensorial joy that you have when you play board games and these are puzzles that definitely give you that. Uh, the art is nice, uh, um, the experience is fun. So, it may not be structurally, say, conceptually different from a collection of puzzles. This is a collection of puzzles. But it really works as a social experience uh, um, that, has, that, that would work well with a board game crowd because it does feel like it is a board game because there's a story, the components are board game quality, and overall it does have that feel of the board gaminess. Um, which puzzles you never know. Again, they may be too easy. They may be for the people that really um, do brain teasers as their main hobby and they can get at some incredibly uh, really challenging level of complexity. Here, the, the challenge I said is even. It's, it's even and it's, it's fun. It's not impossible. There is one puzzle mm, that is very hard. Okay, I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. You decide. But uh, I like the variety of challenges that you find in here. I like the, uh, the overarching sequence that the, 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 um, that the puzzles create. As a story, as I said, it may not be mind-blowing, but it is nice to have it. It does kind of like set the tone for the challenges. Uh, the big elephant in the room is that, of course, you can play the game only once uh, because once you know the content of the puzzles, there is absolutely no joy in performing and going through the puzzles again. Uh, however, there are several things to be said about that. As I said, the game costs around like $18, $20. I see copies online around that, uh, around the price, which is very reasonable for the amount of stuff that you find in here. Trust me, you have to trust me on this one. Um, and if two friends go uh, go and see a movie at the movie theater, they're spending more than they spend that you would spend to buy a copy. Five, six friends, they're gonna save a lot of money, even if you're just a copy and they play it only once. Um, then, if you had the patience of actually putting the components back each in the original in the original envelope, then you could give it to another group of friends, and they could also use it. You could trade it. You could give it away. You could sell it uh, because it's not like a legacy game where the components are thrown apart, thrown away. Everything can be preserved. So you simply uh, put everything back in the core, in the in the right envelopes. You can put some tape, or so simply don't put the tape, and simply tell the friend, "Don't open until you're instructed." And the game is totally playable again, not by you, not by your group, but by another group. So you can share the joy, share the love. There are ways to keep the game alive. Yes, you yourself will be able to play the game only once, but that one time is fun. That one time is engaging. And again, to have a nice evening with your friends for $18, $20 is definitely not the most expensive form of entertaining that there is out there. Overall, Escape the Room Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor is a nice set. You play it only once, but it's a nice, uh, fun evening of brain teasers and challenges and puzzles that I think your group will have fun, um, will have fun dealing with, will have fun trying to solve. It's more convenient than traveling to another city and getting stuck in a room for real. You can have the joy of being 
trapped in a room in your own house without really, of course, being trapped. But in general, again, in conclusion, Escape the Room, it's a fun game. I like the idea and I know there will be more sets coming out and I look forward to trying them because I really had fun trying Escape the Room, Mr. Stargazer's Manor.